This is Nick from logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to, to design a vector candy cane graphic similar to what you see here on my screen with Inkscape. So with that being said let's close out of this and get started and just so you know at any point in this tutorial you could look down here to the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which uh, keystrokes and mouse clicks I'm using. So the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is we'll go to view and make sure we have custom selected and then we'll zoom in at one to one and then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu by clicking this button. Make sure you have Last Selected check, uh, chosen from that uh, drop-down. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. And the first thing we'll do is draw the shape of our candy cane. And we're going to do that by using the Bezier pen. So let's click on the Bezier pen. And let's come down here to the bottom lower third of the screen and click once. And hold Control on the keyboard and drag that line straight up. And then click again while still holding control, bring this over to the left like this. Maybe about that far and then click and then bring it down a little bit about that much. We're holding control the whole time we're doing this and then click again and then hit enter. So it kind of draws sort of like a little uh, hangman drawing there. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go to our edit paths by nodes tool. We'll click on that and this top line up here, we're going to take this and we're going to click and drag this up like that. And then we're going to click on this individual node and this little handle is going to appear. Let's take this handle and hold control so it goes straight up like that. And then we'll do the same thing to this handle. We'll click on this and then hold control so it goes straight up. We'll bring that up a little bit and then hold control, bring this one up a little bit. And then we can go back to our arrow. Then we can come over here to the, uh, the stroke style tab and let's start out with 70. Let's try a 70 point stroke and see how that looks. All right, that's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a rounded join by clicking that button, and then I'm going to give it a rounded cap by clicking that button. And what you can see at what happened there is it rounded the edges so that they're not hard like that. It gives it a nice rounded edge, kind of like a candy cane. Now let's go back to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I've actually made this, um, I'm actually uh, going to stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here so I have them both selected, and hold Control and click and drag this off to the right a little bit. I don't quite like how that inner, how that edge looked right there previously. So I'm going to shape it sort of like that. And then I'm going to come and grab like this center portion right here. I'm just going to pull that out like that. Just to give it a little bit of a dip. And then I'm going to hold control in the keyboard and click on this node right here. So it smooths that out. And then I'll hold control and I'll drag this line out a little bit. And I'm actually going to drag this line up a little bit as well. And then I'm going to take this bottom node right here, let's click on that, and then hold control and click and drag this off to the left a little bit. And I'll hold control and drag this line up, sort of like that, just to give it the shape of a candy cane. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the arrow, let's go back to our arrow tool, and let's drop the opacity of that in half. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate and hold control and click and drag this off to the right. And we'll change the width of this one to one. I'm just going to erase that, hit one, and hit enter. So we end up with a skeleton shape, sort of, li sort of like that. Now what we're going to do now is create the stripes on the candy cane, and I'm going to use the pattern along path effect to do that. And this is going to be the path that I tell the pattern to take. So in order to do that, let's go and create a rectangle. And let's click and drag right here, off to the right a little bit. Let's click and drag and create a little rectangle, sort of like that. Now let's convert that to a path so that they'll let so that Inkscape will let us use that as a pattern. Let's go to path, object to path, and then we'll go back to our arrow, and then let's right click on this and go to copy. We want to make sure we have that copied to our clipboard. And then what we'll do now is we'll click on our shape right here, and let's go to path, path effect editor, and from that drop down, let's choose pattern along path and click add. Now for the pattern copies, we're going to want to select repeated. And then once you do that, let's click this button off to the right right here that says link to path. And it's going to take that shape and make it a pattern going along this path. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this path, this, this original shape right here. If we edit this shape, it'll change the pattern accordingly. So I made that a little thinner to get more patterns in there. 
If it's too wide, you're not going to get much patterns. It's not going to look right. I want to get it off to about this much. I want to have about this many patterns in there. Maybe, maybe a little less, about that much. And another thing is these stripes right here, they're straight abrupt lines, which I don't like. I'm going to give them a slight curve, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go to our uh, circles and ellipses tool and click on that. I'm going to click and drag and create a nice long ellipse, maybe like that. And then we'll go back to the arrow, and I'm going to hold shift and click on the original rectangle and center that up on the horizontal axis, and then click off of the graphic to deselect it. And then I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this oval off to about here, so it's just overlapping the edge right there, kind of like that. You don't want it out here. You don't want these corners sticking out. You want to have the oval completely overlapping the edges right there. And then once you do that, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the rectangle so you have them both selected and go to path difference. And then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate, hold control, click and drag this off to the left until it's about that far out. You want to make sure that the edge of this one is overlapping with the edge beneath it. You don't want it sticking out like that. You want to make sure it's overlapping just like that. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on that one and go to path difference. So you can see what happened here. We now have a nice little pattern that we could use as the stripes for the candy cane. And this is a good, this is a good quantity of stripes right here. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Now in order for us to edit this, we're going to have to change this from a pattern to an actual path. So let's get rid of the pattern by going to Path, Object to Path. And that's now a pattern that we can edit. So what I'll do now is let's close out of the Path Effect Editor. We don't need that anymore. And then we can click our original shape and press Delete on the keyboard. We don't need that anymore. And then we can click on our little pattern here. And let's turn that red. And let's go to the Stroke Paint tab and turn that off and then go to Path, Break Apart. So it's going to break that up into little pieces. And we can click off of the graph to deselect everything. Now what I'm going to do now is go and delete every other stripe here, because we don't need this many stripes. I'm going to do that by clicking this first one here, and then pressing Delete on the keyboard. And I'll go to the one, uh, I'll go to two over, Delete, click. Oops, I got the wrong one. Click this one, Delete. This one, Delete. Click, Delete. Click, Delete. I'm going along and deleting every other stripe. Delete and delete. So we should end up with something sort of like that. Now what we can do now is click and drag over this entire thing and, and go to Path, Union. And then we can hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this over here. So it's overlapping this original shape, kind of like that. I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel to pound the, pan the page over. So what I'll do now is let's click this original black shape right here. Let's right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red pattern that we just created. So we have them both selected and go to path um, intersection. Oops, something wrong. Something went wrong there. Okay, first we have to um, first we have to convert this to a path. This is still a stroke. That's my mistake. Before you do that, let's go to path stroke to path. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate. If you made the mistake along with me, you could just undo it by clicking the undo button. It'll, it'll take you back to uh, your previous steps. So once we duplicate that, hold shift on the keyboard and click on the red stripes and go to path intersections. So we end up with something like that. And the next thing we'll do is let's click on this black shape again and let's go to path linked offset. And let's click and drag this, let's grab this node up here and click and drag this out to about here. Maybe about that much. And then we'll go to Path, Object to Path. And then we'll go back to our arrow. And let's click on this original black shape in the center there. And let's press Delete on the keyboard and get rid of that. And then we'll take this, this new shape that we have, and we'll go to Path. We'll do another linked offset. We'll turn this one red. And let's grab this node up here and drag that out so it's a little bigger. Maybe about... Um, that looks pretty good. We'll leave it right there and then go to Path, Object to Path. And then let's go back to our arrow. And let's click and drag over all of this. And let's bring the opacity on that all the way up. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. 
What I'm going to do now is click on this black shape right here, and I'm going to make that red as well. But I'm going to come over to the Fill tab, and under the HSL tab, I'm going to go down to the L column, and I'm going to lighten this up. Maybe about that much. And then I'll take this and I'll right click it and go to duplicate and let's turn it blue just so we can see it and bring the opacity down a little bit. And then I'll right click that and duplicate that again, turn that green and I'm going to inset this a few times, which is path inset. But instead of clicking that over and over again, I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is control and nine. So I'm going to press control and nine a few times. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four is good. And then I'll hold control and click and drag this off to the right like this. And once you get to about here, that's pretty good. You could hold shift in the keyboard and click on the blue shape beneath it and go to path difference. And we could bring the opacity on that all the way up. And we can lower this one step so it goes beneath the stripes. And let's press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper which is this tool down here, the dropper tool. I use F7 to get that. And let's make that the same shade that this light red is. But come to the L column and make that slightly darker just to give it the effect of a, the illusion of a little shadow. And then we can go back to our arrow and let's click on this lightest red portion in the middle here. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's turn that blue and drop the opacity down a little bit. And let's inset, inset that a few times as well by holding control and pressing nine a few times. One, two, three. Uh, that's pretty good. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate, turn the duplicated copy green and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this to the left, maybe about that much. And then hold shift and click on the blue object beneath it so you have them both selected and go to path difference. And then we could turn that white and we could bring the opacity on that up a little bit. It doesn't need to be that light. I'll actually hold control. I'm going to bring this over to the left a little bit so it's not so far over there. Maybe about that much. And play with the opacity until it looks about right. I'd say that looks pretty good. And then finally we could take this red, this red object in the background here we can right click that and go to duplicate and turn that black and we could send that to the bottom by clicking this button that says lower selection to the bottom and then using the arrow keys I'm going to use the left arrow key to bring this over to about here and then I'll take the opacity and drop that down a fair amount just to give it the effect of a uh, a little drop shadow and after, once you get there, that's pretty much it. We're done. You can click and drag over the whole thing and group it together and resize it as you see fit. You could hold control and shift in the keyboard to resize it, make it smaller, make it bigger. And that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. And I'd like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate the holiday, please accept that as a friendly and courteous gesture from me. And as always, thank you for watching.